Hi, Ido. How are you? Good. Thanks, Nikki. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Pleasure to meet you and congrats you on uh, Snowpiercer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so your character, Bennett, has been slightly torn in the past on order versus resistance, as we saw him, you know, not disclosing Wilford's approach in Big Alice. Uh, how has Bennett changed across seasons and where is he with team resistance going into season three? Um, you know, I think a big part of, of Bennett's kind of uh, logic, loyalty um, comes from science and Melanie. Um, and uh, I think a big reason why Bennett even allowed Wilford's approach to be kind of covered up was because, you know, he knew the state of the train, like the train was falling apart and, um, and Melanie would have, you know, there's no way Melanie would have, would have allowed to kind of for, for Wilford to connect and for us to kind of get any kind of resources from them. Um, so even though there was a slight kind of deceitful element to it, I, you know, I think that she and the train were at the forefront of him. And I think this season there is uh, a similar element. Um, you know, he's trying to complete the mission that Melanie started when she got off the train in, in the second season. So even though he's mourning the fact that she's not on the train and dealing with that loss, I think um, a big motivation and driving force for him to um to get through this bit of story is you know trying to complete what she started and i think that that kind of keeps him together absolutely D does he have any faith even though they just found her data and they're seeing these hot spots mm -hmm. does he have any faith that she still might be out there i think that you know i, I was asked whether you know why doesn't his character talk to Melanie in those kind of scenes where, you know, she's not there, but she's there. Um, and I feel like he is kind of talking to her all the time. So I feel just as possibly I would, if my loved one was not on the train, I just would refuse to, you know, believe that any harm had come to them. Absolutely. Um, and we saw you have these uh, slightly heavy combat scenes at the end of season two. Um, what was it like to film those scenes in such confined spaces? And will we see more of this action in season three? Um, I think there is uh, an insane amount of action in season three. Um, I couldn't, I didn't really know how they were going to do it because I felt like there was so much already that we'd seen on the train. I mean, for me, even though it was a very small space to work in, I love doing all of that physical stuff. I'm always jealous of David and Mickey. They get to kind of go around the train beating everyone up. I, I never get to do that. So it was, it was really fun. And there's, you know, there's just a, a great team of people who um, were there kind of making it all look really good. Um, yeah, I would love to do more of it, you know. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we do see Bennett as his engineer. He's juggling both the navigation of the, the train as well as people. Um, where is his resilience coming from in, in, in just balance, having to balance both? I think that, uh, you know, I think what's great about the, this group of people that are working together on the train, you know, is that ultimately they all believe in getting the, the train to a safe uh, a safe part of the world or or they're doing everything to kind of save humanity and i feel like when somebody's energy dips you kind of you have these people to kind of inspire you to kind of pull you back up and i think that all these characters look very resilient but i think they're all dealing with with horrible loss and despair kind of below the surface so i think that there is a unity in, you know, being able to kind of pick each other up. So I think the people around him kind of help him stay resilient. Very nice. Well, you know, thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you and wishing you the best with season three. Oh, thanks, Nikki. Thank you. Take Cheers. Care. Bye.